In today's video, we're going to talk about the basics of a comb generator. A comb generator is quite simply a device whose output contains multiple harmonics of an input signal. And it's called a comb generator because when you look at the output on a spectrum analyzer, the presence of all the harmonics kind of looks like the upturned teeth of a comb. There are several uses for comb generators in RF applications uh, for generating signals that are much higher in frequency than your signal generator might be able to go up to. Uh, these signals are also phase locked together so that might be useful in some applications as well. So let's just talk about uh, basically what they do and how they work. Of course a sinusoidal signal ideally has energy only at one frequency and nowhere else. If that signal gets distorted in any way, you start adding harmonic components. Uh, an example of this is a square wave, where you take a sine wave and you essentially amplify it and clip it. You're left with essentially odd harmonics in the result. Uh, other types of distortion can add even harmonics. So anytime we distort a waveform, we can add harmonics to it. A comb generator basically modifies the waveform or distorts the waveform so that we create harmonics at both the odd and even harmonic frequencies across a very wide frequency range. So let's take a look at what that looks like in the time domain. And so we'll move the output of the comb generator into the scope input and look at the time domain waveforms. I've got channel 2 connected to a signal source that is uh, essentially a copy of the input signal that's going into the comb generator and channel 1 is the output of the comb generator. And you can see the output just consists of some very fast impulses that are coincident with each cycle of the input. So let's uh, zoom in on one of these uh, impulses here and we can see it's really nothing more than a very fast negative going edge. You know, the faster that edge the higher frequency components are generated. And we can see that we've got uh, one edge per cycle of the input signal. So if we change the input signal frequency, we'll just change the number of edges uh, that we're providing. And that will also change the comb spacing in the frequency domain. Many uh, comb generators use a device called a step recovery diode, or SRD, also known as a snap diode. And it's a pretty special device that, uh, that is used to generate these really fast edges. And there's a lot of information that you can look up on Wikipedia and other places online. We won't go into that detail here. So we can see in the time domain we have you know, one of these impulses per cycle of the input. If I turn the input frequency up, it's at 20 megahertz now. Let's turn it up here to, oh, there's, there's 100 megahertz. We can see I've got you know, more of these uh, impulses that are occurring in that same time period. What's interesting is just the opposite occurs in the frequency domain. So we'll take the output of the comb generator back to the spectrum analyzer input. And remember we're looking at a uh, 100 megahertz input now. So if we look at the spectrum analyzer, we're looking uh, essentially for a 500 megahertz center frequency over a 1 gig span. So each division represents 100 megahertz. We've got 100 megahertz input frequency, I've got energy there, and at 200, 300, 400, 500, all the way up to a gigahertz. Now if we reduce that input frequency back down to 20 megahertz, you can actually see the spacing is going down, so I'm getting more and more components, and the energy in each of those is going down. So now I've got a 20 megahertz input frequency, the comb spacing is at 20 megahertz, the energy of all of them have come down because essentially the energy is spread out over many more teeth in the comb. So we bring the input signal back up again. Let's see, there's a 100 megahertz, so I've got my 100 megahertz spacing. Let's go up to 200 megahertz. So now I've got 200 megahertz spacing between the teeth and the comb. So let's change the frequency span we're looking at here. Let's bring the stop frequency out to the maximum for this analyzer of 3 gigahertz. Now for the 200 megahertz input signal that I've got going into this comb generator, I can see the 200 megahertz spacing from all the harmonics, and I've got signal components right out to 3 gigahertz. And if I had more frequency range, I'd probably see more harmonics above that. So that single 200 megahertz input is giving me energy all the way out at these frequencies. So where do we use this? 
uh, you know, oftentimes when you're testing maybe microwave circuits and things like that, you might need a test signal for maybe a reference of a P to a PLL or some kind of a detector, or maybe the input to a receiver or input to a filter or something like that. So with a relatively low frequency input to a comb generator, you could generate a component, a frequency component, out at the frequency range that you need, a lot less expensively than using a microwave signal generator. You know, many times when you do that, you might select the particular component that you're interested in by using a bandpass filter. By using a relatively wide spacing between the combs, uh, you essentially can make a, your job fairly easy in being able to filter out the component that you want to use in your test application. In some other applications, you might want the comb spacing to be closer together. You know, an example for that is maybe you want to characterize the frequency response of an amplifier or a filter. Uh, by making the comb spacing closer together, you'd approximate kind of a broadband noise source, and then you can basically just follow the peaks and see how, you know, what the frequency response or the shape of a filter might be. So I hope you've learned a little something about what a comb generator is, you know, some of the applications where it could be used, and how uh, the, the harmonics are generated by modifying an input signal and creating essentially impulses that repeat at the uh, input frequency and that results in essentially a comb or evenly spaced set of harmonic frequencies uh, in the frequency domain. Thanks again for watching and comments are always welcome.